Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and I'm calling this painting Gentle Breezes. Now, we'll be painting with a bit of a limited palette today using a set of pastels. Well, actually, two. They're by the Paul Rubens Company, and this is the 36 set, and they also have a 40 set. Now, listen to my message for a chance to win the 36 set of Paul Rubens pastels. Hello, friends, subscribers, and newcomers to Monet Cafe. Well, I'm not only excited about this tutorial, bringing you an art lesson, but also about an amazing giveaway for the very soft pastels that I used in this lesson. It's the Paul Rubens Soft Pastel Set of 36 pastels. Now, I not only love these pastels for their quality, but they're quite affordable. So thank you, Paul Rubens, for agreeing to this giveaway. So watch the tutorial. I'm gonna give you the basic rules, but you can find everything in the description of this video. It's pretty simple. You do have to be a subscriber of Monet Cafe, so click that subscribe button. Also, click the link. It's to my Instagram page in the description of this video. You'll have to follow me, my Instagram page, at Susan Jenkins Artist. Follow Paul Rubens Art, um, their uh, Instagram page as well, and leave a comment in the comment section of that post, that Instagram Reel post. And then I'll be having the drawing and we'll announce the winner on August 9th, Tuesday, August 9th. So be sure you do that and you can share this, share the link with anyone who might wanna be entered into the contest. Now it does have to be US only. Um, Paul Rubens is only shipping to US. So get excited, let's watch this lesson, check out all the rules in the description and at the end of the video. All right guys, let's get started, it should be fun. So there you have it. And like I said, subscribe to this channel to get more of these free videos and to be entered into the contest along with all the other rules. Also, if you would like to become a patron of mine, it's only $5 a month on my Patreon page. And you not only support this channel, but you get extra content and you become part of my beautiful Patreon family. Well, here they are. This is the 36th set of Paul Rubin Soft Pastels. I'm going to be talking about these pastels as I paint. Like I said, I love them. The packaging, it's already dirty here. I had uh, fiddled with it with my hands with pastels all over them. But their packaging is always great. Very secure for shipping. And look at that. They even have a couple of purples. One real light lavender and then that other purple there. I loved the vibrancy of these colors. And there's the purple right there. And I did what's called the finger test. You can pretty quickly see the quality of soft pastels by doing this. This means it has a lot of pigment if a lot of color comes off on your finger. Now this is the 40 set. I got this set first. I've actually already done a tutorial using this set and I do use a few of these for this particular pastel painting tutorial. I'll have links to both of these sets in the description of this video if you just have to buy them right now. Now, I wanted to show you real quick one of the other products they sent me. It's called the Paul Rubin Sketchbook. I love the sketchbook, and I'm going to be sharing more about this in future videos. The surface I'll be using is one that I love. It's called Lux Archival. It's a sanded pastel paper, and I love the fact that it is water friendly. It's also pretty resistant to buckling, which I love. Now, it is a sanded surface, so can you hear that? Nice sanded surface. It allows for a lot of layering. Lately, I've been attaching my surfaces to a piece of black foam core board using some black artist tape. And the reference image is one of my own of some beautiful flowers. I don't think they're actually Queen Anne's lace. Uh, someone told me this is more of a weed variety of them, but they sure look like it to me. And I just loved this reference image. If you're a patron of mine, you will get a downloadable image in your Patreon post. Now I'm just using a piece of vine charcoal. The sketch is gonna be super simple with this. It's just a few of the flowers that I feel is where the energy and the focal point needs to be. So it's just like a little reminder as I start to paint. And I've sped this up only slightly for this tutorial. You should be able to totally follow what I'm doing here. Now you can see somewhat most of the pastels that I'll be using of the two Paul Rubin sets. I put down one of the blues and now I'm looking for a little bit more of a turquoise color. And that's because the sky typically is uh, more of a blue in the upper heavens, a cool blue, and then it goes gradually to a warm, 
blue as you get down towards the horizon. That's because the sun is, or its light is closer to the horizon. So pay attention to that. Next time you're looking at a sky, like on a bright sunny day, you'll see if you look straight up, the heavens are going to be a deep blue, kind of cool, like up in space. And then they get warmer gradually as you go down to the horizon line. Now here is where I am. I'm using my artistic license to make kind of like an imaginary distant tree bank. Now they're going to be far away. So I just used a really nice blue they have in this set. Um, and you can see how I'm switching back and forth between the two sets. I really like this this dark the set has some nice darks in it as well I really like this dark um, deep uh, almost like aquamarine deep blue blue green now I'm actually using the black I had a question recently from someone who can't get one of the dark colors I talk about a lot is the Terry Ludwig eggplant color it's a dark dark purple it almost looks black and she said I'm frustrated I can't get this dark color um, what else could I do and you can use black you can literally just layer some other colors on top of it to give it a little more life and uh, if you're limited you can definitely do that um, so I wanted to mention too notice how I'm just putting in little um, blocking in of color. I'm not trying to uh, really cover up all of the surface yet. I'm getting in my big shapes and my basic values and basic colors for the base of this painting. Think of it as when you're painting, you're working from the ground up or you're working from the uh, one layer that is just going to be your general values and colors and you're going to be layering the other um, final touches and final colors on top. So once you kind of grasp the whole layering concept of soft pastels, it's going to change your painting world. Um, we're not having to paint all of those greens just yet. We're getting in our, our values first. That just means the darks and the lights. And it looks like a mess at first, right? Now, I could just use water for this. I'm going to be doing uh, water on this because this Lux Archival is water friendly. But I have been loving the airbrush medium made by Golden. And let me tell you why um, I feel that it turns the pastel more into a paint that you can just it just flows around it's also seems to make the pastels richer in color than just water um, or sometimes you see me using alcohol like drugstore alcohol so I do use both water and alcohol still to blend pastels or liquefy I like to call it in this way but there's something about this airbrush medium that um, just has a bit more punch to the color and it just flows so nicely so you can see I'm just kind of working around some of the flower shapes once I get this uh, blue sky background in I'm gonna be adding some of the clouds and it doesn't even matter if you cover up some of your flower shape drawings again it was just kind of a guideline now that lighter gray area I put down because that was where there is a, a, a cloud that's kind of a, a blue gray um, not quite white so once I uh, get the sky in, then I start working on the darker values. I wanted to get those light ones in first. I didn't want to have to go wash my brush if I had started um, using the airbrush medium on the dark values first. You don't want to really contaminate the dark into the light. And now because I want these grasses to be loose and reaching upward, Oh heavens, why did I turn it upside down? Well, gravity and, and just the whole um, process of adding these strokes, if it's a little drippy, it's going to drip down, which when you turn it back over, it's reaching upward. So it's just kind of a technique I've been doing recently where I flip things upside down often when I'm doing an underpainting for trees or for grasses, um, but you can do it however you want. So this looks like a mess, right? <laughs> and uh, it's okay. Embrace that. Your painting is going to go through an adolescent stage um, of just getting in, like I said, blocking in the big shapes the values and just some basic colors and so now is where the fun begins now i had this idea of uh, i imagined that there was some sunlight on some of those clouds that are down at the horizon there were some little clouds peeking up and so this is a little too yellow but i know that i can layer with soft pastel so i just wanted a hint of that yellow and i can layer some of this lighter value on top of it and it just gives a little feeling of warmth now i'm getting in some of these things early on because I know that I'm going to be adding grasses and flowers and I didn't want to have to try to paint the grasses and flowers first and then carve in all of that sky and clouds 
later in between all the little blades of grass. Sometimes I like some negative painting of carving things in, but if it's going to be a lot like that, I usually um, will just get something in as a base first. Now I'm getting in a little bit more of this pretty blue, like I said, a cooler blue in the upper heavens and uh, not getting fussy yet about filling in all of the spaces. I'm going to do a little blending trick in a minute. You'll see. Um, I did add a little bit of the uh, warmer blue to some of it, um, just toning it down a bit. And now I'm gradually getting um, lighter values as I move down to the horizon line. The sky will be darker in the upper heavens, gradually get lighter down towards the horizon line. And uh, so again, I'm not getting too fussy about the flowers or the clouds because I'm going to come back in and add those. Um, you can see I'm getting a little warmer with my values, I mean with my colors. Warmer would be more like a teal or a turquoise. Now I'm just getting in a few more of the values for the clouds. You can see the larger cloud in the upper right. Uh, it has a little bit more, probably some rain in it. That's the darker areas. And then there's just a few other wispy little clouds coming off from it, receding into the distance. So I'm just getting in a hint of all of that. And I'll be adding the flowers back again. Um, believe it or not, I, I can still kind of see my marks, but uh, it doesn't matter if you cover them up a bit. And I wanted to talk a little bit more. Watch me develop these clouds. But um, as I'm painting, I wanted to talk about these sets a little bit more. I really love the 36 set for the vibrant, bright color. I mean, look at some of those pinks and those reds, and it has more greens in it. When I did my review on the 40 set, if you want to go find that video that I did, it was a field of sheep at sunset. I saw it had some nice warm tones in it, and um, I noticed that it didn't have many greens. It has some nice uh, or a couple of nice neutral greens. You can kind of see at the top to the left there, and um, you know, and really just some nice colors, but it didn't have a lot of your regular greens you would think of for grass. Now, this particular 36 set has a few greens. You can see the brighter greens um, kind of at the top of the set there. And there's another green, my arm just moved out of the way, towards the bottom right of that lower set that's a nice grassy green. Um, so I did find, too, that they complement each other well. I didn't find any duplicates. Um, okay, now let me mention this. I'm using some packing peanuts. These are literally what people use to um, protect their items when they're shipping them. And I had a, a shipment of something uh, months ago, and I was like, oh, yay, packing peanuts. These are great for blending. So um, I find these work good on really sanded surfaces like this Lux Archival. Whereas if I'm working on something like pastel matte or even watercolor paper, I can even use a tissue or a paper towel. But a tissue or a paper towel on this gritty sanded surface is going to just tear up on you. So I don't advise that. Now, can you see how that just blended that sky so nicely? Now, I'm using one of the neutrals from the 40 set. It's kind of a purpley um, neutral. I really like this color. It's kind of in between a brownish purple. And now why would I be using such a dark value here on top of the sky? In our brains, we see these white flowers and we just go for the white, you know, when we're first beginning to paint. But because the sun is behind these flowers, you're going to get some shadow on the viewer side of the flowers. Also, we need something of contrast, something of a dark value to layer the lighter colors on top of, or they're just not going to show up. So these flowers reaching up into the heavens, and keep a light touch with this, by the way, because you are going to be layering some other colors on top. And we're just creating little shapes. Keep them gestural and lyrical in their movement. Um, but you will notice later, I'll add more of the greens and a little bit lighter values on top of these um, flowers that are reaching up towards the sky. So just get in a few of your, your flower shapes. Make sure they have various sizes. I mean, you can use the reference photo, of course, as a guide, but sometimes I'll change that up a bit um, and make sure they're turning in different directions. Um, with within reason <laughs> you don't want to flip them all over the place keep it consistent with the feel of the motion and the focal point so for the next few minutes you'll see me still kind of developing um, a little bit of this tree line in the back um, it's just a suggestion it's not like I'm trying to draw uh, or paint trees um, individually or anything it's just gives the viewer 
a feeling of depth to the painting. It, it gives uh, levels. I love to have uh, reference images or create my own paintings um, to use my artistic license, as I say, to feel like there's different levels or a feeling of distance in the painting. And by adding this bank of trees, I felt like it did that. It wasn't just a big old section of grass and a sky, kind of like you see in the reference image. Um, but again, I'm going to continue to develop the sky a little bit. I know that when I go to add the flowers, I don't want to have to go back and fiddle a whole lot with adding the clouds, you know, um, between the flowers. So this was kind of an easier way for me to do this. And I'm keeping the clouds pretty similar to what I saw in the reference image because I, I did like how they were flowing. Um, to me, the focal energy was the flowers, of course, reaching up. And there's a few of them looking like they're celebrating or praising the Lord way up above the horizon line. And then the clouds just pulling the viewer's eye back deeper into the painting. So this was one of those um, photos where I got down really low on the ground. And by the way, a trick for that, if you're using a, a cell phone, um, turn your camera to where the lens is on the ground. You know, a lot of times we'll hold our camera upright and we'll get down low on the ground and take a picture. Well, usually the lens is at the top of the camera. So if you flip it upside down, you're getting an even lower view and you get those, that feeling of really deep grasses looking up to the sky. That's just something I experimented with a while ago and uh, was like, oh yeah, this is a better way to do it. Um, now I'm adding a little bit more of darks to the base. If you look, now you look at the flowers in the reference image, can you see how dark they are against the sky? Um, again, there is some green there, but down towards the point of the flower where it meets the stem, there's a little area that's a little darker. So um, just grabbing that pretty dark uh bluish turquoise color that's in the 40 set and by the way these pastels if I had to say somebody asked me this question if I had to say which brand they're similar to I would say Sennelier they're almost to me I mean they're so darn close to Sennelier they they feel like it they apply like it um, which is one of my favorite brands anyway. I love the size of these pastels too. They don't have full sticks or half sticks. This is just the size of the stick. So I love that. I love that I don't have to peel off any labels. <laughs> so uh, really, I'm a big fan of these pastels. But again, I love the fact that they are affordable. Uh, beginners can afford these sets. They're like, they're less than $50 each. Um and now I'm, I'm giving a little bit of that pretty lavender to those clouds. You see how that just gave a little bit of warmth and color interest to the clouds? Um, lavender is a great way to add some grays that have a little bit of color, a neutral color. You know, I just added it to some of the grays that were already there. And uh, now I'm, I'm getting pretty done with the sky. A few more little areas where I want to soften some of the edges or give a little bit more color. And um, the painting, by the way, I've sped this up slightly, but I think it took just a little over an hour. And in comparison to everything else in the painting, I think I did spend a decent amount of time getting this sky right again, because I didn't want to have to go back and develop it after I was ready to start having fun with the flowers. So once I got the sky done and those general shapes of the flowers in, then it's time to have some fun. Um, adding some of those flower colors and those lively grasses. I've been keeping the footage zoomed out a bit so you could somewhat see the color choices I'm making, grabbing from the sets of pastels, but I'm gonna zoom in a little bit right now so you can watch me develop these flowers. And this is one of the colors from the 40 set that at first glance, you wouldn't think of it as a green, but it actually is a kind of a nice neutral green. You see how it feels a little green as you apply it? And it was just such a pretty color with some of that uh, turquoisey dark blue. And I'm just lightly glazing a little bit over the darker values. You're going to see that layer of value changes um, in the flowers that start to really give them shape and depth. Once again, I am trying to keep them full of gesture and movement and life. I don't want flowers that feel stiff or heavy. So often all you need is a little quick gestural stroke and then just let it be. Because if you fuss around with it too much, before you know it, 
um, your elements that you wanted to have life and movement are going to start feeling very heavy. So this is something that's been a constant goal of mine. I, I still don't think I have it um, totally where I want it to be, but uh, definitely been getting better at that because I have a purposeful intention to get better at that. Now I'm adding a few little hints. These are going to be flowers that are far away. Now because they're far away, they're going to be a little lighter in value. Values decrease in the distance. It gets lighter. So I didn't use those dark colors or that dark turquoisey color um, for the distant flowers. Just a little bit of that pretty neutral greenish brown. Um, this is a really pretty color. I love this color. It's from the 40 set. It's a neutral purpley mauve. Oh, it's just so pretty. And at this point, I'm just kind of playing with color, having fun. These two sets work so well together. I think the top set has um, lots of nice neutrals in it. Of course, it has some brights. It has some beautiful um, uh, reds in it, cool reds and warm reds, some pretty golden colors, a nice uh, coral color, and a coral pink in that set. So really some fun colors in that set as well. But I think they work well together because the lower set, the 36 set, has so many nice brights in it. So you can definitely, for under $100, if you got both of these sets, I, I'm hesitant of saying prices because, you know, prices change on Amazon. And this is the place, the only place I've found them. Now, thank you, Paul Rubens. They provided the sets for me so that I could do these demos. But um, they're on Amazon. And if you enter the contest to get the 36 set, great. But if you can't wait, uh, you can go ahead and buy it for uh, under like around $40. So pretty awesome price. Um, comparatively to some of the other nicer pastels, uh, I mean, you'd spend $100 each a set on these easily for some of the other brands that I won't mention their names. So I think it's pretty obvious. I'm a big fan of these pastels, and I would say one of the big reasons is because I absolutely love it when I can offer affordable quality products to beginners or people who may have even been painting a while, but you just don't have the budget. And I think that's my heart because that's that's me. <laughs> and that's definitely where I was. You know, now I'm, I'm blessed to be able to um, have a channel and sometimes get products to do demos and things like that. But uh, these products are expensive. So it is great when I can say, hey guys, you can really start painting now with some quality pastels and not, um, you know, spend an arm and a leg. Uh, on it. So you won't have to starve to be able to buy some quality soft pastels. Some of us might do that. Okay, now here's that beautiful purple. Yay, I was so glad. There was a pretty purple in the 36 set. I've mentioned this in other videos where I demo some sets of pastels. Purple is a rare color in nature, but it's a rare color in pastel sets as well. Often they are lacking good purples. It's one of my favorite, it is my favorite color, by the way, my favorite color. But it's one of my favorite colors to add into shadows, um, especially when it's kind of a nice neutral purple. Um, so I thought that added some life to the painting. Um, in the reference image, again, if you're a patron of mine, you'll get the actual reference image. You can zoom into it and see what I'm talking about. There were some brilliant blue bluish flowers. And often when I create those pretty royal blue flowers, I add a bit of purple to them as well. So I think I do that a little bit at the end. And now is when it starts to get really fun. I've gotten in most of the um, general positioning of the flowers. I get to start adding some of the grasses, some other colors, and some interesting textures. And now you'll be able to see how even though I used black it's the black from the uh, 36 set. That's the only dark in the 36 set, by the way. It's a black. Um, I mean, I know color is relative, but it looks pretty much like black. There are some darks you can see in the 40 set up there. Um, one of them is more of a bluish black, and I think one is more of a brownish black. Um, so still a couple of nice darks in the 40 set as well. But you'll be able to see how even though I used black for the... Uh, basic grass value, as I start adding these other colors on top, it still really starts to come to life with color. So don't worry, um, whomever that person was who can't get the 
Terry Ludwig eggplant color. I think it's called V100. It is a great color. Um, don't worry, you can use um, black and other dark colors and just layer some pretty colors on top. You can see here now where I'm adding, it's a pretty kind of a brownish color. Um, and often, even though I love really pretty vibrant colors, um, sometimes I'm really drawn to uh, images that have just a really neutral, uh, dulled out color palette and you just splash a few other colors in there. I love that look. And by the way, next month, um, well, it, it is next month now, by the time I post this video, the month of August <laughs> where you're seeing this, um, we're gonna focus in my Patreon group and on the Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook on neutrals, a neutral palette and the power of a neutral palette. We've talked about this a little before, but I don't think I've ever devoted a whole month to it. So, and by the way, guys, <clears throat> I learn from <laughs> while I'm providing these lessons, because trust me, I research so much stuff um, before I um, give it to you guys. And uh, so I always say, I, I started Monet Cafe when I started learning a few things. I wanted to share it. And I just always said, I'm learning and sharing it and bringing you guys along for the ride. So I'm always appreciative to those of you who um, are understanding that I am a self-taught artist only learning uh, pastel painting from the internet. <laughs> so I'm just like a lot of you guys. I uh, haven't had any formal training in pastel. I had one in-person workshop that was awesome but other than that you know just uh, a life that hasn't allowed me to do a lot of that so I know a lot of you can relate to that look at some of these pretty um, tealish colors I'm sneaking in here um, and, and the colors are really I was really happy with that kind of neutrally browns and um, almost like a taupey color in some of the flowers and then gradually I'll start to add some life with some greens coming along. I'm just doing a little more blending with my little um, packing peanut, they're called, and the sky still looks nice and loose. And I'm zooming in again here for you to see me using that pretty green that's in the, that one I think was too light, it's the other green that's in the 36 set. And this is where I start adding some of my pretty green colors to this and bringing it to life um, just a little bit. I don't wanna get those flowers that are contrasted against the sky too awfully light. I noticed that the particular flowers, they had uh, a few of them up top, they, were, they weren't quite open yet. And what's interesting about this type of flower is they have all these little um, long filaments or, or they almost look like a spider legs where they are reaching up and curling in before the flower actually opens. And they have a lot of little curly areas on there. So I was having fun just trying to uh, suggest some of those shapes and textures. I used a few of the greens, that neutral green I just had, and this um, brighter green from the 36 set I was using before, to also just suggest some of the flowers that were deeper within the grasses. Because when you're, especially when you're down at a level like this, taking a photo, uh, or just this vantage point, many of the flowers, they're not floating on top. They're, they're buried deep within the grasses and um, hidden behind certain blades of grass. Here's where I'm using one of the vibrant blues. Is this one from, this blue might be from the uh, 40 set actually. I wish I could have zoomed out further to show you both of the sets in full, but then the painting would have been just too far away for you to even see what I'm doing. Um, see now how I'm adding a little bit of purple to those little blue flowers there, just a little bit to give it a little life and um, color interest. Let's see where I put that one blue when I put it back up. Maybe I'll be able to tell where I put it. Uh, yep, it was back up in the 40 set. So that's a nice blue. Um, really pretty for some, I love painting blue flowers and I would uh, definitely use that color for some of the blue flowers I love to create. All right, a few more. These are little, um, little tidbits of things. Often I'll just look for a shape of some of the grasses or some sort of little weed that's growing, and I'll just uh, incorporate that little shape in a few areas of interest. Now this is that pretty light green from the 36 set, and it added some contrast of flowers kind of in, in front of those background trees. Now I'm using this really pretty neutral pale blue. It's uh, like a gray blue. And I noticed that the flowers in this image, 
our brain says they're white um, Queen Anne's lace, but they weren't really all that dark in this particular image. Again, I was on the shadow side of the flowers. Um, the sun was shining behind them. Now, this is the only instance where I used anything other than the Paul Rubens two sets of pastels. It's a Prismacolor new pastel. These are long rectangular sticks of pastel that are harder, and they're great for making stems and grasses. So I just used it to give some suggestion to stems. Also, I noticed some little interesting textures of weedy type of grasses growing up. I gave them a few interesting shapes. Um, keep your focal point in mind when you're doing this. Don't add things that will compete with your focal energy. For me, that energy was these flowers just reaching up into the sky, like they're saying, praise the Lord. So everything else is just like a supporting character. I've only got about three minutes to go in this tutorial, so I'm zooming in here so you can see a little better. I'm adding some music for your enjoyment, but be sure to listen to the end. I'm going to go over those rules again to win this set, the 36th set of the Paul Rubin Soft Pastels. By the way, of course, uh, if you're seeing this video after the first week of August 2022, obviously the contest is over. So <laughs> this is just for when this video first airs. All right, guys, enjoy the music. I'll be back in just a few minutes. There was a really pretty pink in the 36 set, and often I like to add just a pop of interesting color at the end. So here is the final, really soft and lyrical. And also too, I'm gonna give you a quick recap of the contest rules if you're watching this video during the contest period. As a recap, here is how to enter to win the 36 set of Paul Rubin's Soft Pastels. Of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel. That's easy, just click the subscribe button. Click the Instagram link that's in the description of this video. Yes, that does mean you need to have an Instagram account. Comment on the Instagram post that it will lead you to that describes the contest. Just say, hey, I wanna win, whatever you wanna say. And be sure to follow my Instagram page at Susan Jenkins Artist. Also follow Paul Rubens Art on Instagram. That's it, and the winner will be announced on August 9th, 2022. It is US only. All right, guys, good luck, happy painting, God bless, and I hope you learned a lot. <laughs>